How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week four, and we get ahead on the road today, all the way over to the West Coast to play Oregon at Autzen Stadium. The Ducks are one and one. They're an A-minus team, so likely in the low 90s. And they are favored to win. Number 25 in the country, as opposed to our number five. But uh, Lee Corso thinks that they're going to get the dub. We lead them in every category besides rush offense and pass defense. Uh, and honestly, those are pretty close. They're not great in those categories. Uh, we're just a little bit worse. Now, the Ducks have played at Texas A&M, and they lost that one by a touchdown. Last week, we played Texas A&M, and we won by a little bit more than a touchdown, 57-24. to I'd consider that one a beatdown. Their second game, which they managed to win, was against Bowling Green, uh, who's now 0-2, and they managed to only win that one by four points. So, honestly, I'm not all too concerned about this one. The scheduling also just continues to be weird. Last week, we played Tamu, who had already played Oregon, and now we're playing Oregon, and we will play UCLA after a bye. But Oregon plays us and then plays UCLA next week. So just a lot of common opponents for us here early in the season. Now, recruiting-wise, we don't have a whole lot to do. Uh, I've done some more scouting to fill the board with players that fit with us better, a little bit more low-lock cheese, but we do have eight visits ready to be scheduled, and I'm thinking that we'll probably start to send those early. Uh, we know that UCLA should be ranked, and we want to face off against a ranked opponent, but we also want to face off against a ranked conference opponent, but I don't know if Mizu is going to be ranked uh, at the time that we play them, and the same thing with South Carolina and Florida. So we're just going to hedge our bets and send them to this Bruins game early. Uh, we'll stack visits here. And then, uh, you know, later in the season, when we start stacking up visits for our other recruits, we will hopefully be able to send them to a ranked conference opponent. But so far, every single one of these is looking great. We're getting a ton of complimentary visits. We're getting a ton of free XP for all of that. And that's going to help us level up potentially... Uh, after this week. How about uh, ESPN? I love this headline. Backyard barbecued at Hard Rock Stadium will never be the same. That's of course after the FCS Northwest team came in and uh, upset what was a number seven Miami team on the road. 38 to 28. Uh, they came out strong and just kind of held the lead there. So impressive win for them what we would kind of assume is like a North Dakota state based on the colors that they changed those two in the CFB revamped mod. Uh, somehow we're still ranked number five, three games played. We have a chance to see number three Penn State lose as they will play number six Clemson, uh, USC and Washington play. But other than that, not a crazy amount of ranked games today. And of course, we'll just take a quick little peek uh, but our boys are still in that two and three slot for the Heisman. Uh, Marquis having one heck of a season already. Receiving wise, only seven catches, but 325 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, so just absolutely absurd, averaging over 100 yards per game there. But what matters is the kick and punt returns. Four kick return touchdowns this season already on just 14 attempts. And on the punt return, no touchdowns, uh, but eight returns and 181 yards. We should be getting one of those soon. I feel like we're a little bit overdue, and I guess it would show up as defensive. Uh, but he has a defensive touchdown because the game considers uh, a return field goal for a touchdown as a fumble return for a touchdown. Uh, so we can add that onto it. And honestly, it maybe makes him look a little bit better taking it away from a return touchdown and making it a defensive one it makes him look more like a uh, triple threat radon is obviously also having a decent season uh leading the nation in passing yards however a lot of teams haven't played as many games as us rushing wise he's our leader uh mike fontaine will come back from injury this week but right on top 50 with 236 on the ground marquise is the third leading receiver in the country, just a few yards off of the two guys at the top, one from Utah, one from Wake Forest. 
Again, tackle stuff doesn't matter because the way the game calculates tackles, but sacks, uh, Wilson has two. That's okay. I would love to see some more of that. If we could just bully the Oregon quarterback this week, that would be great. Two interceptions for Don Riley puts him at 17th or realistically tied for fifth in the country. Uh, uh, both of those interceptions came last game as we picked up four of them, which was pretty spectacular. And kicking wise, have we kicked a field goal? Yeah, Frederick has a 39 yarder. So just a quick look, little look at the season stats so far. Uh, let's go ahead and just get into this game. We expect to win. Um, we're going to go with a little juxtaposition going into Oregon. We'll go all, all white because they have so many options to choose from, and I legitimately don't know what to go with. Um, I wish the Nightmare Green showed up a little bit better in the game. It looks almost black in this, whereas in real life, it's a little bit more green looking. Uh, but I think maybe we just kind of scroll through and pick one because everything except for the Lewis and Clark is pretty phenomenal and there are so so many options i mean like come on it, it's beautiful so yeah let's just scroll through and five four three two one guess we're playing with their throwbacks the pick in honor of kenny wheaton uh oregon is a 93 overall with a 97 offense and a 92 defense so high powered offense kind of what you expect from oregon they have the edge on us there we only have a two overall advantage this game's not going to be easy but if we play like we have recently there's a good chance for a blowout now the ducks offense uh top 50 in the country at this point we would expect to see a little bit more honestly out of them and defensively they do not look good they give up a lot of points uh defensively we look very solid uh we need to slow down the pass last game certainly didn't help but our offense has been cooking uh one of the worst teams running the ball this year and we kind of expected that losing what was it like 390 overall running backs and now our best is high 70s uh and he was injured so uh hopefully we can get those numbers up but it's not the end of the world Top players for Oregon, a 96 overall left guard, a 92 overall wide receiver, and the guy that might cook us, uh, Nixon, the 92 overall quarterback. All three of our top players are on hot streaks so far this season, which is fantastic. And Mike Fontaine is probable with the high ankle sprain. Meanwhile, the Ducks have a left outside linebacker with a foot fracture gone for the season and a free safety out for two more weeks, so their defense will struggle just that much more it is a beautiful late summer day early fall day here at Autzen Stadium where it never rains uh, we're going to be looking to uh, come out of here with an easy win I hate to do it to my ducks but it is how it is we're gonna win the toss and elect to kick this one off with a gentle two mile an hour breeze and just like last week playing on the road at Kyle Field in Texas A&M uh, the fans here at Autzen are known for being pretty rowdy, so if we can take them out of the game as soon as possible, that will certainly be to our benefit. Uh, we're going to open this up, expecting some runs, and the quarterback's going to keep it out towards the edge. Oh my gosh, okay. Good little run. Big stiff arm, Adam Nixon, starting with an 8-yard carry. Looks like they want to come out running a little bit of an option early on this one. Oh, I got burns. Whew, Spencer Stanley saved me because my man was wide open. Well, the deflection there brings up the third and two. Two tight ends set for the Ducks, expecting a run. A motion of man. Let's hope that it is a run. No, it's going to be a play action. That tight end, just wide open. Unfortunately, we brought too much pressure to be able to contain that so they get the first down. And that moves them to about midfield on this opening drive. And tight end comes in motion on first down, expecting the run this time. It is a handoff out towards the edge, and Will Phillips can't get the tackle, but Aaron Jenkins is there to clean it up. And we're going to audible out of the blitz that we were going to show there. Well, we didn't even need it. Kale Mackey gets in there and disrupts the play for a loss of yard. So we've got a third and eight to contend with, and I got to imagine this quarterback is one that is willing to take off and scramble, so we'll hope for that doesn't become a factor in. Oh my gosh, what a generous spot to Travis Bryan as they pick up another first down. We know they have a high-powered offense. I'm a little bit disappointed in how we've 
Not been able to shut it down yet. Kill Mackey with a big hit there as they just get back to the line of scrimmage. Curious to see if they will go with another run here soon. I'm expecting it. And there it is, a draw. Blown up in the backfield. Denman loses three, it's third and long again. Really hope that we can get this stop. Would love to get off the field. Tight end in motion again on third down. They step back looking to throw. Quarterback's going to throw off his back foot and it should have been picked off by Sean Franklin, but it's just a deflection. It will bring up the fourth down. And we're lucky that they weren't just a little bit further downfield because they do come out showing the pump formation so we don't have to worry about them kicking a field goal. Uh, unfortunately, that means we don't really get the chance to return the punt, and that was maybe a beauty. Oh, that might have been out at the one. Oh, wow. That's one of the best CPU punts we've ever seen. Absolutely pinned us here at the goal line. We're going with the fullback dive on first down, and it looks like we narrowly avoid the safety there. JJ Barr gets a couple there. And we do have Mike Fontaine, and we're going to give him the ball on second down, running it up the middle. Mike on his first carry back from injury does a good job getting four yards and looks like he stayed healthy. And with a little bit of breathing room for us, we'll step back, looking to throw the ball, trying to get it off in time, and we just barely avoid the sack and the safety. But we'll have to punt this one away. And Frederick is standing at the absolute back end of the end zone. Wind coming against us. They should be getting really good field position here. Fielding it pretty much at midfield. Can we get a good tackle? No, I just complete we whiffed. They're inside the 30. Early in this game, it's the special teams of Oregon getting the advantage. As now their offense has an excellent chance to score points and a good first down. Ron picks up six. Something's got to give here. This one, another run out towards the edge, and Kale's there to stop him. Force that third down. And it was the running back looking a little bit shaken up after that play, so maybe a little bit of a benefit for us. They're throwing to the air. St Spencer Stanley can't get there. McDonald comes down with it, and it's a first and goal. Ducks have been doing a great job so far on this one. A little bit frustrating for us. First and goal, bringing the safety blitz. No pressure gets there, and Darren Barrow is wide open, crossing in front of his quarterback who finds him. Nixon now 5-7, and the Ducks take a 7-0 lead here pretty late in the first quarter. Ooh, there's a top 10 upset, although maybe not one that you would call an upset most of the time. Ohio State beats number 8, Iowa 31-21. They're 3-0. All right, Marquise, what do you got? Sprained wrist for that Oregon running back that was injured. Uh, he'll be back soon. And Marquise will be not able to get to the end zone. Well, we get to start this drive at the 41-yard line this time out as opposed to the one-yard line. B was wide open. Uh, I just didn't feel like making the throw. So we'll scramble. We'll pick up 12 and look towards the end zone here. We've crossed midfield after one play on this drive, and we're going to go with the read. Radon trying to pick up the blocks, a little spin move. Took a big shot. Got nine yards. I don't know if that one's worth it. So far, it's Radon looking pretty solid running the ball, but how was the passing? He didn't really have a chance to get a pass off last time, and I just ran straight into the sack. Why was wide open? I think somebody else was wide open downfield. Uh, uh, that's on me. So it's third and 10. Controller is shaking like crazy as Autzen has gotten really, really loud. We will look to throw the ball, hoping for the best. Right bumper was kind of open. Oh, Chad Bradshaw. That pass needed to be passed him so we could catch it on the run. Instead, we lose three yards on the pass. And now we have to punt this one away. I can't go for this. I don't think that I can trust the uh, offense to get that, so... We'll hope for the best, trying to kind of pin them deep. I think I shanked this. Oh my gosh. This game is just not going well for us early on. The Oregon offense will take over at the 32-yard line with just 13 seconds left in the first quarter as they will hand it off up the middle. And the blocking was phenomenal and a broken tackle shows Brad Albert going 19 yards. That's the guy who has the sprained wrist. Probably the last play of this quarter. They come out in the hurry up looking to throw, stepping back, and... Oh, uh, well, Elbert 
picks up some yards, broke a tackle, and at the end of one, it is just not looking good for us. Uh, offense has to figure it out. I can't really blame the defense right now, but just the offense is just going backwards. It's a second and seven to start this second quarter. Uh, we can't panic too much. We do get the ball to start the third, and oh my gosh. Oh, you got to be kidding me. This quarterback just burned us. It's his second broken tackle of the game, and he gets 19 on the option. Should have absolutely been a tackle for loss, but I screwed it up, and I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to burn us, quarterback. I think that was maybe supposed to be a screen. He throws away as he feels the pressure. We get bailed out just a little bit. And now it's second down. A little bit of a breather for us. They're going to step back looking to throw again. And wide open is the tight end. And it's a first and goal for the Ducks. This is really, really frustrating. Can we get the stop here? Man coming in motion. This feels like a sweep. And it is. Thankfully, we're there to get the stop. We brought the big blitz. So we hit him at the line. And I think I'm just going to continue to bring the pressure on these blitzes just try to disrupt them as much as possible uh or we could allow them to fall forward while getting tackled and basically land on the goal line third and goal i'm going to engage eight see if we can do anything to stop this trying to bring the pressure and we do get to the quarterback it was another option he had his man open for the pitch but they'll lose some uh yardage and it's fourth and goal i don't like this they're gonna go for it uh, we're in our goal line package, hoping for the, uh, man coverage. If they do decide to pass the ball, it looks like it's going to be, uh, play action in the quarterback. Oh my gosh, he got tipped at the line. He had his man open in the end zone. It, he donked it off of his tight end's helmet. Just kind of a breakdown in communications, it seems. But once again, we get to start our drive backed up against the end zone. So first down, we'll try to go with the run up the middle. Mike Fontaine gives us a little bit of breathing room. And we have like 28 total yards of offense at this point. So we need something to go well. We're going to send our boys deep. And oh, this is probably an interception. I didn't really mean to. Oh, I didn't want to throw that. Oh, all too lucky right on that one of three through the air. Oh, a two on our third downs at this point. Trying not to go. Oh, a three will look to pass and over the middle. Bradshaw's got to be wide open on the slant route. Okay, breathe a little bit here. The offense can move. We just got to make smart throws. Not sure if passing or running is the, the better option at this point, but we're going to try to throw it up for Marquise and it's almost picked off. Ah, what am I doing? At this point, Radon is not making a very good case for why he should be the one that wins the Heisman. Uh, and Radon hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities. Only a two-yard carry for Mike on that one. Puts us in another third and long situation here. Well, let's see what we can do. Controller shaking again outside the pocket. Kind of looking at JJ Barr. And I should have known that that linebacker would be able to keep with him. This is bad. From the 22-yard line, we're going to have to punt the ball away again. I don't think that we really have any other options, so we'll try to get it downfield and hope they don't get a great return, but they're going to field it at like the 33, and they have some blocks, so Oregon once again starting this drive with great field position. Radon now 2 of 6 passing the ball. He's gotten himself sacked once. Um, I am uh, should have had a couple picks. I'm not impressed. I would love to see... Him just find Marquise deep on one of these. Quarterback rolling out of the pocket, throwing it on the run, finds Philip Patton. But it does bring up a third and long. This would be great if we could just get off the field, although I'm sure if we force the fourth down, they'll punt the ball and get us stuck like at the goal line again. This one thrown up. It should be picked off, and Spencer Stanley, the true freshman, comes down with it. 84 is giving chase but will he be able to catch him spencer a pick six to get us on the board in this one the defense coming through when it matters most there we battled tooth and nail with georgia to get him to commit to us and it's already paid off as the freshman getting some big playing time comes up with a big play all right can we get the stop again defense having to come out for another set they're doing a decent job tackling so far. I don't like those runs to the edge, though. 
feels a little bit like they're getting too many yards uh, every attempt. Second and six. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to the run. Uh, no, it's a screen. Kale should be out there. Good tackle on the running back. Drops him for a loss of three and brings up another third long. Put this quarterback in a tough spot, forcing him to throw that pick six last time out. Maybe a chance that we could do it again here on this third down. Trips to the left as they are burning the clock out on this uh, second half. Not going to spend the time out because I want to have as many as we can. And we should see the clock snap. Uh, they're looking to throw. Coverage is really, really, really good. Quarterback throwing one up and he has McDonald. Oh, that's brutal. We just couldn't get the pressure to him as he rolled out of the pocket. And so just like that, the Ducks stay alive on this drive. And they're going to be looking for it again here. And oh, Logan Smith just dropped another interception. I know that we've been struggling to get pressure on this quarterback, but we're going to make it harder on ourselves. Only going to rush three to get that extra coverage. As this one is a throw that works well for us. And now I'm going to start taking ta timeouts. Third down. A minute and seven left in this half. They're stepping back. Looking to throw. The coverage is okay. Quarterback all the time in the world. And there's the sack. We drop him for a loss of two. And force the fourth down. So they will have to punt this one away. Again, it's probably not going to be returnable for us. Uh, this one should just land in the end zone, though. So 55 seconds and one timeout to work with. There's a chance that we could take the lead before heading into the locker rooms in this one. Uh, on top of that, again, we do get the ball to start the third quarter. So uh, really high odds of us just starting to run away with this one. There's Malcolm Williams. Oh, he was on a curl, so he had to slow down there. But he could have been gone. Kind of disappointing. Almost played that one perfectly. Marquise here on the left is who I'm looking at. Uh, instead, I'm... Oh, he was wide open. I should have thrown that. I thought the coverage was going to be a little bit different. They stepped up to stop the scramble almost immediately. So to me, that says that they are definitely not letting Radon run. Uh, we're going to step back, looking to throw outside the pocket. A is wide open. Can we get it to him? It's the new Williams and... No. Not going to come down with it. Good help from the other safety. It's third and nine. And we're still just sitting at 25% on the day on our third down. Trying to throw the timing up pretty much into triple coverage. Does not work. And we have not made too many risky plays in this game so far. But we're going for one here. Trying to wait for Marquise to get open downfield. And we throw it deep. And he catches it in stride. And Marquise Jackson takes it 67 yards to the house. Oh my gosh, I thought for sure that safety was going to get there in time, but Marquis shot just a little boost of speed. He ran over some sort of speed boost like you'd see in Mario Kart, and he took off. Nobody's going to catch him in that situation. So it's the extra risky fourth down conversion uh, turned into a touchdown. And that puts us in the driver's seat of this one. Gotta hope the defense steps up here. 23 seconds and three timeouts for Oregon. And they're looking to pass. They're getting those passes towards the sideline and out of bounds. We definitely gotta try to do what we can to stop them. We'll try a little cover six here as, oh, that'll help us. A little false start backs them up five yards. Question's gonna be, uh, what can we do to stop these guys? Or maybe they've given up. We'll see if they take the timeout. I got to imagine they do. First timeout after the big 11-yard pickup on the ground. All right. Well, that uh, gives them another first, and they're going to hand it off again. I'm curious because then they take the timeout. I think Cristobal is still the head coach at Oregon. Uh, I'm not so sure I agree with this play calling, though. Probably see the hurry up. They get the first down. Kind of in uh, maybe too much of a prevent here. In the cover four, this might be the last play of the half. And it's going to be thrown up. And Leon Sandcastle just got burned. Oh, no. As time expires on the half, they take it into the end zone. Maybe we can block the kick. No. Well, 14 all. That's going to be our first half coming to a close. Not at all how I wish that it would have happened. Um... I mean, the offense showed a couple of sparks. The defense, all things considered, played pretty dang well. 
Uh, we just need them to slow things down a little bit for the Ducks, not get burned deep like that. And then the offense is the one that needs to improve here in the second half. Uh, let's see if we can just send Marquis to the house on this opening kick return. Certainly they have to be worried about the potential of a Marquis Jackson kick return. If we get just like one pan kick, it could be over and JJ Barr did it, but again, uh, just like last game, I ruined our chances just by not going to the sideline. I think that should have been a touchdown. Turns into a very, very mediocre return to the 29 yard line. As on first down, we will go with the uh, option. I read that completely wrong and Radon's gonna get just popped for a loss of four. My decision-making for sure has been subpar in this game. I'm sending Marquis deep, no deep safeties. And we're gonna get hit as we throw. If I don't leave the pocket, I think that's a touchdown. I'm doing nothing to help us. One of five on third downs. We'll see if we can pick up this one. But it is incredibly long. And I think maybe Malcolm Williams? No. Bernard Ford. Defender gets a hand on it. Well, this is certainly not what you like to see. Having to punt them the ball again. This is the most we've ever had to use Marcus Frederick, I feel like, in a game. And again, they get great field position. I feel like he almost fumbled the ball there looked to me at least like it had popped out but that doesn't matter because they have it at midfield to start another drive and we're gonna bring some pressure expecting the run on first down they do hand it off he runs towards the edge and they lose a yard that was a good time to dial up the pressure and bring a blitz but we've still got to make a couple stops on this drive hoping for the best a lot of tight ends in this formation they'll step back looking to throw somebody's gonna be open there it is in <laughs> we had so many guys in the area, and Patton comes down with it for 16 yards. Sandcastle's getting picked on a little bit in this one. Oregon continuing to march down the field, but at least we're not letting them run the ball very well on us. Team's typically been known for its rush defense the past few years, so it's nice to see those wings continue to be spread. And yeah, there's another stop. Kale just jumps the gap and drops him for a loss of a yard. It's almost certain that we see a pass, maybe a screen on this third and 11. Step back, looking to throw, and over the middle they find Patton who holds onto it through the contact, but it's not enough for the first down. So it's just going to be the field goal team out for the Ducks. Uh, not a very good kicking school traditionally. How are they doing in this dynasty? Ooh, he missed it. Was he short? Okay, this kicker is apparently really, really weak with the leg. Okay, we caught a break there. Well, uh, let's just try to keep passing the ball. I feel like running isn't working, so maybe we throw the ball up and hope for the best. Oh, that's a pick. Oh, I just like, I'm messing this up every time. We've called the flea flicker. They're bringing pressure. Mm, they're bringing even more pressure. Can we quickly get one deep on them? Well, we're gonna try. Second and 10. Looking for it. Maybe Malcolm? Oh my gosh. Bruh. Radon's now 4 of 14 with an interception in the game. Completely unacceptable. They're stepping back. I was supposed to be covering the running back and I didn't. I've missed a tackle. Oh my gosh. This is atrocious. Well, if we get a couple of sacks in a row or tackles for loss, we might be able to uh, knock Oregon out of field goal range. We know they've got a bad kicker. Can we get some pressure on the quarterback? No, a diving attempt to swat the ball away doesn't work. And Philip Patton continues to torch us as he goes into the end zone. Ducks take a seven point lead here midway through the third quarter. And that's just disappointing coverage there. All right, well. I don't feel too confident at this point. This is worrisome. Blocking okay on the return. Marquise is going to give us good field position as he gets across midfield. And that's what the offense needs. They can move the ball a little bit. I don't think they can get a full drive. So I think at this point that anything that we can do to get them closer to scoring uh, without them being on the field, the better. Handing this one off to Mike Fontaine. And first down and running maybe maybe is the answer here uh that's six yards what if we just run the ball until they stop us 
How far can we get? Mike Fontaine, a first down on the second carry of the drive. Try the handoff again. As Fontaine had some space, I didn't cut it up soon enough. Well, there's the stop, so now let's try to throw and see if we can get Raid on his fifth completion of the game. I don't have the highest hopes on this one, but you never know. See if we can bait them in. And if we can just throw one up. Oh no, this is Williams. He's, what's an interception? No! What am I doing right now? Oregon now winning the turnover battle. Two to one. We're down a touchdown. They're at the seven yard line. We're gonna try to bring some pressure. Expecting the run up the middle and there it is. Two broken tackles though. And they're gonna get two yards out of the play. That is absolutely unacceptable in this situation. You have to get your tackle secured. This one, another run. And we get him at the line of scrimmage. It is third down. Defense has to hold here. I'm honestly tempted to take the timeout, but we'll just run it. They step back, looking to throw. There's a man. Leon Sandcastle was burned, but thankfully recovers in time to make the tackle. Thankfully, it will allow us just to get the punt team out onto the field. No harm comes from the interception. Just a little bit less time on the clock. But now we can get the ball into Marquise's hands. I saw Pancake way out on the side. And Marquise making guys miss. Couldn't get the step back cheese on him. But just like that, okay, we're in scoring position. We could hit a field goal from here if we had to. I'm feeling the pressure now. A minute left in the third quarter. We start this drive from the 16-yard line, and we'll go with a run to Mike Fontaine on first down. That's a good seven-yard carry. Those runs on first down have been working really well. I don't think we'll have too many more opportunities to pass as we approach the end zone here, so we'll try to sneak one in on this second down. And giving it to the running back, Mike almost gets into the end zone. It's a first and goal basically at the goal line. This is as good of a chance as we'll have uh, all game long, I think, to get a, a touchdown. Looking to give it to Mike up the middle, first and goal. And we find the gap. Oh my goodness. If we just went straight up the middle, we were going to get hit. But we find a little crease. And we tie this game up. So now we have to uh, call on the defense again. And hope that they can manage to get us a stop. Just got to defend for 75 yards and keep them out of the end zone. I think I have to have trust that the offense will be able to get something done their next time out onto the field. A man in motion kind of makes me think it's going to be a run to the left, but it's a play action and it's a wide open tight end. And when this guy's come in motion, we just have not covered him so far this game. Don't think the zone has really worked all that well for us. So let's go back to the man on first down. Another option out towards the edge. They get the pitch out. And my goodness, that dude broke the tackles, but thankfully stepped out of bounds. Oregon trying to get as many plays out of this third quarter as they can. Looks like it's going to be another run, and Will Phillips is there to get the tackle. Will they get one final playoff in this third quarter? Third and three? No. Unable to get set in time, so all tied up. Heading into the fourth. This is way too close of a game. We were not projected to win this, although we should have been favored. And it's just six more minutes. Can we manage to come out on top? Expecting them to run it on this down. They will. Jenkins is there. He needs to get the tackle or get some backup, and he's able to slow the running back down enough for Kale Mackey to get in there and get the tackle. So early in this fourth quarter, it's the punt formation once again for Oregon, and it will be a chance for our offense to take control of this game. And who knows? Maybe even win it. This kick looks to be shanked out of bounds. We'll get decent field position. And that is honestly the smartest move that any team could do, punting it to us. Just kick it out of bounds. Don't let Marquise get his hands on it. And uh, hope that you can slow down the offense. Mike, again, a solid first down carry to open up the drive. See if we can pass him the ball on this one. He looks like he should be wide open. Should have waited for him to get a little bit further through his route, but we do get positive yards and another completion. And I don't think I'm going to put this one in Radon's hands. We're going to hand the ball off to Mike Fontaine. See what he can do. And the offensive line doesn't get the push. Mike gets a yard, but he's too short. And we're going to go for it. I hope this doesn't really come back to bite us. But we got to send him deep. 
And we got to throw it deep. Marquis Jackson, a step on his man. Can't hold on to it through the contact. I don't think he needed to jump for that. I think if he just keeps running, he catches it in stride and it's a touchdown. Instead, it's a turnover on down. And with just four minutes left in the game, Oregon starts this drive in great field position with a chance to take the lead. Defense comes out strong. We bring the blitz and they lose two. Every second that ticks away, I get a little bit more nervous. Oh, this is not the game that we want to lose. Not this early in the season to run. Out towards the edge. Kale Mackey can't get the tackle. Neither can Logan Smith. And they get another first down. I think we got to get to this quarterback. I'm expecting a pass, but I'm still going to bring the safety blitz. And no, it is a handoff. We're there to meet him in the backfield. He's able to fall forward, but we only give up a yard, thankfully. I think this one's got to be a pass. No, another handoff. They're really relying on the running game. It's working really well. But it is third down now. Oregon has been in the hurry up almost this entire drive. And we've seen a lot of runs. Again, expecting the pass. It's a draw. Nobody can get there. Will Phillips forces the fumble. And Taylor's going to pick it up. So we get the turnover in crunch time. Just three minutes left in this game. And the refs won't even take a look at it. So we know that it was clean. Three minutes and a chance to win. As we are in control, running it on first down. Mike Fontaine, great first down carry, gets eight yards. As the clock will tick below three minutes. I'm not going to be afraid to use the clock on this one. We're going to try to burn it a little bit just so that we can avoid passing as much as possible. Radon running on the scramble. There's going to be a face mask. I think we're getting free yards at the end of this play. Personal foul. Face Let's go. We needed that. So the penalty gives us a first down just across the 45-yard line. Uh, and we're going to continue to move two and a half minutes now in this game. Mike Fontaine up the middle. Great blocking. Gets 12 yards. That'll stop the clock to move the chains. And we're going with the play action here. Seeing if we can beat them. They are bringing some pressure. A was open. I got a scramble, though. Running for my life. I think I saw that there was a penalty. We're just going to get out of bounds here, though. Six yards. Was there no penalty? I guess we're clean. I don't know what I saw. But two minutes to go. Second and four. Give this to JJ Barr up the middle. Again, the offensive line in crunch time is working really well. And it's another big run to stop the clock and move the chains for us. Offensive line just pushing their weight around. Giving us an opportunity to win this one. As the clock is burning. And we are in field goal range at this point. Under two minutes to go. I'm surprised we're going to isn't taking their timeouts yet. The only problem here is I just don't want to pass the ball, but they have to be keying in on all this running. We're going to give it to JJ on the counter. He's got to cut up field, but I just can't get around the blocker, so it's a loss of two, and it's third down. I don't like this. I don't think a field goal wins it. I just don't trust the defense. So we're going to look to throw. Their coverage has been pretty dang good all game long. And on this one, Williams can't hold on. Uh, <laughs> my decision making my decision making has been absolutely atrocious this game hopefully this isn't a wrong decision either we're kicking the field goal we have the two mile an hour tailwind so there's no way that we don't get that we have the lead but it's only by three and with a minute to go and all their timeouts Oregon can win this with a walk off touchdown I almost said home run <laughs> I'm hoping that they try to return this kick so we can get them buried inside the 20. Might be a little bit too deep, and yeah, it will be a touchback, so plenty of time and 75 yards to go. I think we can expect to see them passing the ball quite a bit on this drive. They looked like they were looking for the screen, and it's a sack from Kale Mackey on first down. A loss of three, and the first timeout taken from Oregon. Beautiful, beautiful play that time on second down. We'll try to jump the snap here. 52 seconds at the snap. Plenty of time rushing the quarterback, and we get another sack. It's a loss of two more and a second timeout taken for the Ducks. Almost to the point where we can taste victory. We just need two more stops. They're looking to throw. And over the middle, we're there to get the stop. It is 10 yards given up, but it's fourth and five with the clock moving. And it could all come down to this. Stepping back to throw. Throwing it up. Stanley gets the deflection. Oh, he has been so clutch. It's a turnover on downs. And with just 25 seconds left in this game, we can come out in the victory formation. 
Oh my gosh, this should have never been so close. Oregon takes their final timeout. And we will just be able to knee the ball one more time. Absolutely not a game I expected to be as close as it has been. We made plenty of mistakes and Oregon capitalized on them the entire game. So as the clock ticks down to zero, oh, we could just feel lucky to get out of here with the win. Too many terrible plays. Radon didn't look very good. Marquise did what he could, but uh, our Heisman guy is not playing well. Kale Mackey is player of the game. Six tackles for loss in a sack. Honorable mention has to be Spencer Stanley with that massive pick six and the deflection to seal the win. Uh, we're going to be able to leave Oregon. Uh, breathing a sigh of relief. It's as simple as that. So we managed to survive the upset scare on the road. A field goal in the waning moments of the fourth quarter is enough to get the win. 24 to 21. They had more first downs. They had more rushing yards, more passing yards, more time of possession. Uh, but I think at the end, it's their pick six that they threw. We both had two turnovers. Uh, ours didn't really give them good field position. Theirs gave us a great stop on defense and also seven points. So... Maybe a little bit more useful. Their quarterback was great. 21 to 28 for 206 yards and three touchdowns. Had some decent runs as well. Some strong running. Uh, but we were just able to get it done in the end. Just enough. The defense came up clutch in that one. So we improved to 4-0 and on the season. And I think after that, do we get lucky? Yeah, we have a nice bye week. A perfect time for it. Uh, we have one trip across the country, and then next week, UCLA will have to fly across the country to play us. So let's take the rest and uh, hope that we can win what it will be potentially our third-ranked opponent in a row. UCLA has moved up to number 11, and I'm curious why. We know there was at least one pretty big upset. How many more were there that we didn't see? Penn State does beat Clemson, so they jump up to number one in the country. Clemson was number six. They fall down just two spots to number eight. Notre Dame will play Miami. That's nice. Let's see. So Clemson had a loss. Iowa at number eight lost. Washington at nine lost. That's always great to see. Purdue at 11 took a loss. 14 California, 20 Illinois. Uh, and Texas A&M and Oregon also both lost and dropped out of the rankings. So uh, I don't know. That was tough. We've got a bunch of ranked games lined up for next week as well. So thankfully we can just sit back on the sidelines already four games played and maybe watch uh, the rest of the top teams beat each other up. I can't imagine we're looking good. Marquise moves up to the top spot after a 67 uh, receiving yards game with just a touchdown. He did okay, I guess, in the return department. And uh, Radon deservedly plummets down to fifth place six of 19 through the air for 102 yards and a touchdown but also two interceptions and they were not great interceptions so uh deserving he'll bounce back i'm sure of that uh he'll have another good game somewhere in here just that one was not gonna be enough unfortunately that's gonna have to do it for this episode as a way to continue to narrow down what team that we're moving to, you guys have earned yourselves another hint. And this time, it is that we will not be coaching a team located in the state of Colorado. I think in this game, that knocks out three teams. Uh, so if you're keeping a list, you know, you'll be able to start scratching these off. We've got 126 candidates. I think we've eliminated like 12 somewhere in there. But with that hint, uh, and what I would call a pretty entertaining game. Maybe you hit the like button, helps out. And just like subscribing, it's free to do. And I really appreciate all the support that you guys continue to show for this series. Uh, of course, while you're down there hitting like and subscribe, you know, turning the bell on, you can head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord. And as always, there's a link to the college football revamped mod. If you're trying to get it for yourself, they have some really cool things in the works. So I'm excited for the next release. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.